Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. It's 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, I went through the news feeds this morning, and today's one of those mornings where nothing really jumped out at me. There's one story about Elon Musk I'm going to touch on, and nothing really grabbed my attention. Sometimes my views are up, sometimes they're down. Uh, in the last couple of days, I, I really felt positive about a few of the videos I did the last couple of days. And I was like, oh, I, I, watch, I usually I'll watch for the first hour in real time to see how the views go for about 45 minutes. I'll watch. And if, you know, if I get like over 20 views in 45 minutes, then that, view, that video, that's a, that's a good sign that that video is going to do really good. And uh, it's weird. The last couple of days that that happened, but then I, I go back and look at the view, the video the next day, and it, it just petered out. It's a nothing, and uh, so I, I I don't get discouraged. But when this happens, I, I say, you know what? I, I'm not going to try to guess what people want to see or what people are going to watch. I'm just going to talk about whatever the whatever I want to talk about. That's today's video. Okay, so. As I went through the news feeds this morning, there's one story that I want to touch on briefly. I'll have the link for this down below. And after that, I'm going to talk about myself. You want to hear it? Fine. You don't? Don't watch the video. I really just don't care today. But it's going to be interesting because I'm going to be completely 100% honest. Stuff I've never told anybody. And all right. So the first thing, I saw this story about Elon Musk. And I, again, I have to wonder, it just seems like this country is just so divided liberal and conservative, uh, Trump supporters, MAGA, and my side. And sometimes I, I just wonder if I'm just the other side of the coin, you know, because I start to get so frustrated and so angry with them. And I see that they're frustrated and angry with me. And then I realize we're both, we both fear things. Like I fear a dictator. I, I fear an authoritarian government. I really see that coming. And then I look at their posts, and they see uh, an invasion from the southern border. And now I, I was actually I actually stopped yesterday, and I went to like a hardcore Trump group, not to troll, just to see what they were saying, just to see what they were what was on their minds. And there was there there's all these exaggerated posts about uh, immigrants coming to this country, and then there was actually actual posts about immigrants uh, taking hotel rooms and kicking people out. Uh, and then it, it got down to taking people's homes, knocking on their front door and kicking people out of their home. You know, so that I start to see the fear here. You know, this is what they fear. They fear uh, people uh, that don't look like them coming into this country and taking it over. You know, and I, I, I just start to wonder if, you know, we're just maybe both of us, maybe both sides are just so. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just the other side of the coin. You know, maybe my thoughts are just as, as fearful and hateful as the MAGA side. So I see this post by Elon Musk today, and I, this is where I just, I, I don't understand sometimes. Okay, so Elon Musk, he, he agrees with this. I'll have the link for this down below. Elon Musk says, uh, he, he, he kind of kicks up a conspiracy theory about, Patriot Front. Remember when Patriot Front, I think they got arrested in uh, Idaho. They were in the back of a U-Haul van. Remember that? And they were all dressed identically. They looked kind of stupid. They, they were all wearing like blue shirts and uh, chinos. What do they call chinos? And they all had like white, you know, they all, they were all literally dressed identical. And the weird thing is, the, the, you see the police come. These are like real police, like a whole the whole police force, and they got them down on their knees. And but they they still have their their coverings on their face. Okay, so now Elon Musk, there's this 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 person on Twitter called uh, Champagne Joshi, and I, so I looked into this all this morning, and he thinks that this is a conspiracy theory, that these people Patriot Front isn't really the, uh, a right wing group. It's really the Feds trying to uh, make the right wing look bad in other words, you know so it's it's really just a conspiracy by federal agents these people were you know because they were wearing masks and they were all dressed identically that you know and look, I, I, the first thing that occurs to me is like look if this if this was uh, uh, some kind of thing by the feds they wouldn't have done it so you know so you know so stupid where they're all dressed identically the same um and then I start reading more, and, and Elon Musk actually agrees with this. He said, uh, Elon Musk said something along the lines of, uh, you know, how come they didn't take the masks off? 
you know, and if you look more into the story, they did. All the all those people were arrested, and I, I actually found all of their mug shots. All right, so the the masks were off. It wasn't like, you know, these guys were feds. You know, it's like Elon Musk has access to everything, and yet, you know, I found these mug shots of these these guys with their masks off. So Elon Musk must have, must have found this too, if I could find it. Yet he still wants to, you know, he doesn't mention that the mugshots are there, that, you know, it's obviously not feds. These are real people, you know, with real lives that are, that are, are really being arraigned and arrested and, and held in and held in a jail. And, he, you know, but he, he doesn't mention that. And he still wants to say that, this, oh, there's something fishy there. And he calls this free speech and it just gets so frustrating. But then I see a comment and it says, if this is just an attempt by the libtards because they, they it's obviously federal agents and they just it just it, it to uh booster their world view okay think about that think about that so this side is saying the the right is saying that that people like me aren't acknowledging it because looking at this it it it, it boosters my world view of right wing being racist and all that but yet, what he is doing is coming up with a conspiracy conspiracy theory because it boosters his worldview. He's you know he's doing the exact same thing that he's accusing the other side of. You know he's saying that libtards believe this that you know that they're real people and not feds because it boosters our worldview. And he's saying that to booster his own world view and i just start to see the you know, and elon, uh, elon musk agrees with this guy and i just start to see the insanity in everything you know sometimes i just get so frustrated i i i, I you know i just i just want to give up all right now let me tell you about a few other things i wasn't going to talk about this um these are personal things that happened in my life lately i've been having drug dreams even i've been clean and sober for over 17 years I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch tracks here real quick. Uh, segue into something else. All right. And I've been having drug dreams. And you know, it, you talk to anybody that's in recovery like me. I was a hardcore addict, heroin, crack, cocaine every day, liquor. I, I first thing I would have at eight o'clock in the morning was a half pint of Jaeger. Then I'd go get my heroin. Then I'd go get my crack. Every single day for two decades. And then every, anything else I could find. I take on top of that every single day. I lost jobs. I lost my family. I lost my, my rent. I lost my cars. I got arrested. I got in fights. I got thrown in jail. Yeah. Up until October 23rd, 2006. So I've been cleaning sober for 17 years, but I still have drug dreams. And they're weird. They're, they're, they're so weird. And the best part of them is when I wake up. You know, because usually my dream, um, I feel desperate. Like I, you know, I have to get this drug, or or some of some of the people I'm with have the drug, and I want it. I want to use it too, you know. I want them to, to give me some, and I'm desperate, or or I have my own, and they want to they want to take it away from me, and or I go to do it, and it blows away, or, or uh, though I have money to go buy it, and the money turns into monopoly. Yeah, seriously, these are real dreams. The money turns into monopoly money. I swear, I swear to God, you know. And inevitably, I wake up. Okay. And I'm like, and I, the, the feeling is always just so, it is the best feeling in the world. Because I wake up and I'm like, I go, oh my God, you know, my life is good. That's not my life anymore. I'm, I've been clean and sober, you know, my, I've rebuilt my life here. You know, I've got a nice place, my family, I got money in the bank, I got a car. You know, I've got, I've got people's respect, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've had good, good looking women relationships and everything, you know, and I'm just like so relieved. But I start thinking, I start thinking, you know, what if I did use, you know, because of course I used to be an addict. So, you know, it goes through my head, geez, you know, and I, I used to call this lighting the, lighting the, the, the wick, lighting the fuse. You got to be careful when you do this. Cause I see you start thinking like, well, geez, you know, I could today, I could just go off on my own. I have money in the bank, you know, I could, you know, I, 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 I don't have any dealers numbers anymore, but I could, I'm sure I could find where dealers are selling somewhere in the city right and i could buy it but then what would i do you know there, there's still the old addict that's saying well you could do this you know if you, you know you got the money you got plenty of money you got plenty of privacy nobody'd ever know you know but then all of a sudden it occurs to me okay i get it back here and i you know i use it 
and then what? And then, you know, and this is what occurred to me. You know, I got clean when I was, when I was 40 and my sexuality, my, my intense sex drive had a lot to do with it. Um, that was all part of the, the drug actually was my girlfriend. I've talked about this in other videos. Every, you know, when I would see a pretty girl, this is how intertwined they were. I'd see a, a sexy girl and I'd start thinking my dealer's phone numbers. Swear to God, I, I would, I would, it, it would, it would trigger me to use by being sexually aroused. Believe it or not, you know, I, well, I'm sure a lot of people will believe it. But once I turned, this is how it got easy. I've never talked about this. And since I, I've, I've turned 40, and it's not that my sex drive has disappeared. I still have a very strong sex drive, but I have more of a relationship view these days. Like I really want, you know, I, I want a woman, a partner, you know, that I could be, you know, that I could have, you know, great intimacy with every day. I still have the sex drive, but it's not that, that raw sex drive with just people, you know, a woman I see on the street or some kind of freaky fantasy over here. It's more of a, uh, toned down uh, relationship kind of sexuality, you know? So there, there's still, there's not the reason to use anymore. Like once I got the drug back here, I, I, you know, going and getting this adult material like I used to, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. Like once I got the drugs back here, what would I do? So I'd use them, right? And I get all weird in my apartment and I get all wired and, and then what? You know, and then I'd have to hide in here but this is the part that bothered me the most that made me realize that made me feel safe that I actually am safely in recovery is I started thinking about the next day I'd have to face people, you know, and I would know I used, but nobody else would. And I wouldn't be able to face them because this is who I become now. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud that I'm a recovering addict, that I'm artist and recovery. This is my identity. And if I saw, if I did use and I saw people the next day, I wouldn't be me anymore. Like it's, you know, I don't know how I would face people, you know, cause it, it's like I would lose my identity of who I actually am now. After 17 years, I am, I am proud of who I am. You know, not to mention how I work out and I become more cognizant of my health and my body and what that would do to it, you know? And I, I just can't imagine how bad I would feel if I ever used, and then for what? What would I do once I got the drugs back here? I, you know, because before I used to run out and get adult material and come back and get all naked and sit there and use and look through the adult material and use, and it was this weird thing I used to do. I've talked about this in other videos. And a lot of other guys do this too. You know, this is why if you look on my other channel, Staying Clean, there's a specific video about this and it's gotten like 30,000 views at this point. It's just insane. It's on my, my channel. I'll put the link down below, Staying Clean. And that's what I used to do. But now I just don't have the, you know, I, I still have a sex drive, but I don't have the urge to do that anymore. I, you know, I don't have that kind of sex drive. I want a relationship. I want a normal, you know, once I, once I got, I fell in love with my soulmate, Audrey, who passed away a couple of years ago. I felt so good about, I felt normal and it felt right and good. And, and, you know, the sex, the sex drive was still there. You know, I, you know, I, I, I drooled over her, but it was just, if it, it was, it felt like I, I was, what I was missing, you know? And I realized that my, just the raw sexuality and the using before was empty. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, you know? So this is something I thought after I used, uh, not, I mean, after I, I thought about using what would happen, you know, how I would feel. Okay, I was going to talk about, and last, I want to do this in another video now because I can see I'm up to 15 minutes already. In the last, this is going to sound cocky and arrogant. In the last two months, I've been approached by at least three women. And they just, they didn't just say that I look handsome. They, they gushed over me. And I start to ask myself, are, are, you know, are they just telling me this because I look weird or because, you know, because they think I need my, my confidence boosted or do I actually look good? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little insecure about it. So I was going to talk about it in this video and it's, it's going to sound arrogant, but it, it's the truth and I want to talk about it. All right. So that's going to be the next video. All right.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you watched it, great. Thank you. If you didn't, you missed out. All right, I'll be back with that video. You guys have a good Sunday.